Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. <clears throat> I've been a um, family therapist for 31 years and for 19 years I have specialized in working with people who are traumatized as young children. Um, as part of that work I have spent a good deal of time trying to understand the concept of multiple personalities. Um, it's taken psychiatrists over a hundred years to formally acknowledge that there is such a condition and that it's um, not prevalent, but it's common across the globe. Um, it used to be called MPD, Multiple Personality Disorder, and about uh, 1995 or so, psychiatrists officially changed that diagnosis to dissociative identity disorder. Uh, dissoci dissociative uh, describes losing touch, dissociation, which means loosely losing touch with reality. Uh, so people who have DID, dissociative identity disorder, uh, quote, lose touch with reality, which means over time they exhibit uh, markedly different personalities in the same body. This has been now recorded on videotape and audio tape <coughs> and it proves that people in the same body can um, have harsh personalities, friendly personalities, very different personas and psyches, to use the pop psych phrases. Uh, they can have different allergies and even different eyeglass prescriptions uh, when different personalities, quote, take them over. The conventional view over the last 50 years or so has been, starting in the psychiatric community and filtering out through the media to the rest of us, that people who have, quote, multiple personalities are crazy. They are mentally ill. What I have come to believe as a student of the uh, dissociation in this um, common experience is uh, this does not merit the label of disease or mental illness. We all are um, fragmented personalities from a little to a lot. The people that get the most media attention, like the famous uh, media subject of Sybil, the ones who are most fragmented get all the press. The rest of us who are a little bit fragmented just think fragmenting is normal. What does personality fragmenting mean? A concept that makes sense to me, I hope to you, is that personalities really are different parts of our brain which all interact with lightning speed to produce our thoughts, our perceptions, and our behaviors. Personality is nothing more than a group of mini computers inside this amazing device that we're all equipped with. Where do personalities come from? I hope you'd agree that they form as the brain starts to connect its synapses from a young uh, embryo and infant into a young child, the brain grows at an astonishing rate. We're just beginning to understand that. And it forms synapses and connections, and it programs uh, these synapses and connections with information. We learn at amazing rates during the first years of our lives. So I think it's factual to say that a personality like yours forms in the first early years of a child's life. It is brain connections forming and storing information. It's been a long-standing fact that we learn, we human beings and other animals learn when we experience things in our environment, we change our thoughts, our behaviors, and our perceptions. We can reprogram 
regions of our brain. What that implies is we can, within limits, change our personality. <clears throat> I've been studying since 1992 how to help people who had a very painful early childhood environment. They uh, experienced parental abuse, abandonment, and neglect. That seems to have on any child, regardless of race, background, socioeconomic class, it seems to have a profound effect on shaping human personalities. Uh, one way of looking at that is being traumatized as a very young child creates significant brain uh, personality fragmenting, brain development, and causes the formation of what can be loosely called a false self. That is an array of personality parts or brain regions which govern the growing child's perceptions, values, and behaviors. The evidence of people being ruled by a false self, a collection of brain regions that are very localized and aim to help the person survive. The evidence of everybody being ruled, governed, by a false self the evidence is overwhelming. It's everywhere if you know what to look for. My website, which is nonprofit educational, um, been on the web for 10 years, and the related videos, like the one you're watching, document what I have learned and have come to believe about personality fragmenting, how normal it is, what traits are. And most importantly, if you have, quote, bad habits or aspects of your personality that frustrate you or other people, you can intentionally reprogram parts of your personality and significantly shift um, your moods, your perception, your focus, and overall, your degree of happiness as the world changes in and around you. This technique is called parts work. Hundreds of therapists are learning to do this around the world. It's nothing new. It's not mine. I learned it from a psychologist in Chicago who had been evolving inner family systems therapy for 10 years. That was 19 years ago. Um, I hope you, if you're interested in shifting aspects of your personality, I hope you will invest a few hours studying either Lesson 1 in my nonprofit website or the related videos in my channel, like this one. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to contact me by email or in person. I hope you find this thought-provoking and maybe affirm. We all are mentally split to some degree. It's normal, not mentally ill.